family would like to thank you for coming and supporting them and just taking the time to honor and remember Myrna's life and uh, that, that is very special to them and helpful to them. So thanks for, for doing that. I'm going to read some verses from Psalm 139 this morning. A good portion of the psalm, about 18 verses. It's a psalm that we read on Saturday morning. Just a, well, as it turned out, a day before Myrna went home to heaven. So uh, some poignant things were in there for us. But uh, I'll just read it for us. It says uh, to us, You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all of my ways. Before the word is on my tongue, Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. And your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me, and the light will become night around me, even the darkness will be not dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my innermost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, and I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. King David wrote, knowing that God is great and big and we can't get away from him. But he also wrote, knowing that God is intimately acquainted with even our thoughts and, and just everything about us. And so he's a big God to take care of us, but he's an intimate God who knows us and loves us and cares for us in that way. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning for who you are, because you are alone, God. And you are good, and you are great, and you are in control. And Lord, we thank you for that. There is no one else like you, Lord. We thank you that we don't even need to fear death because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. He has overcome death and given us life after this life. Lord, we do, though, today seek your strength and your grace and comfort. We need that in our lives for this season of, of grief and sorrow. But Lord, we are confident today in who you are and confident in how you will help us to grieve and to remember. And we're thankful for that. Confident in all that you will provide for us. So we pray that this service will bring honor and glory to you. We pray that it will encourage and comfort us. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Myrna Moraine Verhagen, 77, went home to be with the Lord on September 27th. 2015. Myrna was born on March 4th, 1938 in rural Greeley County, Nebraska, the daughter of Ole and Irma Peterson Thompson. As a young child, Myrna moved with her family to Ogallala. She attended the Ogallala Public Schools. She graduated from high school in 1957. After graduation, she worked at the Dollar Cafe as well as a caregiver to her mother. On June 23, 1963, Myrna was united in marriage to Richard Berhagen. The couple was uh, resided at the Haythorn Ranch near Arthur, where Myrna was employed as a cook. 
1964, the couple moved to a ranch north of Sutherland and then settled in Ogallala in 1965. Myrna enjoyed being a homemaker and a caregiver to her mother, who suffered with multiple sclerosis for many years. Later, Myrna was employed at TRW for a short time. <coughs> she enjoyed bowling. She enjoyed fabric painting, embroidery, doing puzzle books, adult coloring books, and, of course, playing Yahtzee. Myrna hosted groups in her home for Bible study for about 15 years, and she was a longtime member of the First Baptist Church. Proceeding in her and death were her parents. Survivors include her husband, Richard, her son, Rick Verhagen, her daughter, Becky Bishop, all of Ogallala, her son, Rodney, and his wife, Crystal Verhagen of Grand Island, one brother, James S., and his wife, Linda Thompson of North Platte, four grandsons, Quinton, Matthew, Tanner, and Thomas, and five great well, the family has a couple of songs they want us to sing together as a congregation this morning. And so Martin's going to come and lead us in the first one. It'll be on the screen, or you can use your hymn books, 254, if you want to use that, or it'll be on the screen as well. Good morning, and let's stand together to sing this song. I'm sure we're going to do this song for everyone. Down in her life. There would be a lot of them there. 
Some of you know her because uh, you were in Bible study with her. And, and uh, man, she was faithful to do that. She loved to do that. Uh, I would regularly ask her, how's the Bible study going? And she was always ready to share. And, and she just she enjoyed that so much. Studying God's Word. That's one thing that I think, when I think of her, I think of her just, she was a student of God's Word. She'd come to church, she'd take notes. She just was, she was eager to learn, eager to know what is God trying to put into my life. And so that Bible study gave her that opportunity. Let alone, I'm sure she enjoyed the fellowship coming together. That's always a great thing as well. So those things. Uh, Myrna was here from the beginning, practically, First Baptist Church. Long before we ever showed up, she was here. Helped with uh, the old church downtown. Helped with this newer facility here. And uh, she was... How, 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 how do I say this? She was the longest member of First Baptist Church. Okay, she was at, she was she was the not oldest in the sense of her age, but she'd been a member the longest. Fifty-seven years she'd been a member of First Baptist Church. Okay, now we'll, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> that's good, but that's not the most important thing in life. I think of Myrna. I think of Richard. You saw one, you saw the other usually. At least, at least I did in my context here at church. He was very faithful to his wife. She knew him, so those are good things. And let's move off that. Let's get back to her sense of humor. <laughs> what do you think about the sense of humor? Of course, I think to be in the Birmingham family, you have to have a sense of humor, don't you? <laughs> right? Richard is uh, right there with her. I think there was a competition between you two. <laughs> See who could be, yeah, always pulling somebody's leg. I sometimes think Myrna had an aggressive sense of humor. That's what I would call it. Uh, she, she could get after you pretty good. So uh, all those things about Myrna, uh, I would remember. And you, I'm sure, have, have memories as well. Some of you, uh, she took care of you, uh, you know, so, so she, she was all those things. But what we really want to think about today, and the most important thing for us to think about today is how we move from this life to the next life. Because we're all moving. We're going to move faster than we did. But we're all going to go. And so, I'm going to say something this morning that may surprise you. And then I'm going to say something else that might surprise you more. But we're at this memorial service, we're thinking good things. But I'm going to tell you that Myrna Verhagen did not deserve to go to heaven. Did you hear what I said? Okay. She did not deserve heaven. And here's what may surprise you more. Neither do you. I'll soften the blow a little bit. Neither do I. Okay. But when we put our trust in Jesus Christ, we don't get what we deserve. You never want what you deserve from God. Don't get in that line. That's a foolish line. Get in the line that says grace. Get in the line that that's what you want. You want to receive that from Him. We don't deserve those things. We deserve judgment and we get mercy if we know Jesus. We deserve death and we get life if we know Jesus Christ. We deserve hell, we get heaven if we know Jesus Christ. And Myrna believed that Jesus died on the cross for her sins. We said this morning in the obituary, we said that Myrna went home to be with the Lord on September 27th. We could not have read it that way if she had not put her faith in Jesus Christ. I cannot always read an obituary in that way. But with Myrna, we can. And we are very, very, very thankful that we can. Because someone who places their trust in Christ for their salvation doesn't get what they deserve. Instead of judgment, we get mercy and grace. And the Bible tells us we need to believe in what Jesus has done for us. Believe is just a word that means to trust 
to put our faith in something. Now, let me, let me also tell you this, that it is not faith that saves us. We can have the greatest faith in something and be very wrong about it. I could have all the confidence in the world that if I got on the roof of this church today and I jumped off that I was going to fly. And if you watched, you'd see what would happen. It's not my faith that saves me. It's not Myrna's faith that saved her. It's always the object that we put our faith in that is the key. So don't just say you've got to believe. You've got to believe the right thing. You have to believe who Jesus Christ is and what He has done for you. So I want you to be careful about what you put your faith in, making sure that it is something that actually can save you or someone who can actually save you. Because sometimes we think that I am good enough to go to heaven. That I can make it on my own. That's a lie. The Bible doesn't tell us that good people go to heaven. You have to be perfect to go to heaven. Myrna was not perfect. All the good things we can remember, she was not perfect. God demands perfection. And if you're not perfect, then we've got a problem. And because we're all sinners, we fail to meet God's standard of perfection. And God is always very serious about enforcing His standards. We have a problem. And because we don't meet that standard, God says you can't be with me in the world to come. You have to be separated from me. And the Bible calls that place of separation very clearly. It calls it hell. But the good news is that God loves us. And God made a way for us to be with Him for all of eternity and to deal with those things that separate us from Him. And the good news is this is His Son, Jesus Christ. He came to die on the cross in your place, in my place. He came to take the penalty that we deserve. We deserve to be separated from God. We deserve His judgment. Jesus took that on the cross. And now we don't get what we deserve. By putting our trust in Christ, we get mercy and grace. And we get a relationship with Him. It's not what Myrna believed. But that's what Myrna believed. Not that she was good enough but that Jesus died in her place. I also don't want you to put your faith in something that says, you know, we'll all get to heaven one way or another. We all go to heaven, right? Everybody goes to heaven, right? That's not what the Bible tells us. Jesus is the one who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You can look it up, John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through me, Jesus. If there were other ways to get to heaven, then why would Jesus come and suffer and go through all that cross? To say, well, wait a minute, why did I do that? Because I see there's three or four other ways to get there. Why don't you just take one of those other ways? But there isn't. That's why he came. That's why he did what he did. And the Bible tells us that Jesus Christ is our gift. He went to the cross to give us the gift of eternal life. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. And when someone offers you a gift, you have two choices. You can either accept that gift or you can reject that gift. But those are the only two choices you can make. And the Bible says that when we accept the gift of eternal life by believing in what Jesus Christ has done on the cross for us, that and that alone, to believe that Jesus died in your place, paying the debt that you owed, and now you place your confidence and you trust in Him for that. That's what we're believed. The Bible tells us that when we put our trust in Christ, God gives us this eternal life as a free gift. Not because we've earned it or somehow deserve it, or because, yes, you know, I'm good enough. No. But because we believe in Jesus as our Savior. It's a very, very familiar verse in the Bible, John chapter 3, verse 16. And it tells us, for God so loved the world. That's you. You're the world. It's the people of the world. You are who he died for. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Jesus Christ came. He lived a perfect life on this earth. He was crucified. He was buried. But he came back to life. He gave his one and only son. That whoever believes in him, trusts in him, puts his faith in him. What does he promise? You shall never perish but have eternal life. We're not talking about physical life here, are we? Run is gone in that way. All of us will go in that way. 
He's talking about spiritual life. He's talking about spending eternity either separated from God, that's death, or with God, that's eternal life. So, what was Myrna's faith in? It was in Jesus Christ. It was in Jesus Christ who says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. It was in Jesus Christ who says, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live like Myrna is right now, even after dying, like she did on September 27th. She died so she could live. It's a crazy sounding paradox, but it's true. I'm confident this morning that Myrna wants you to understand and know and trust in Jesus Christ, her Savior, make Him your Savior, to believe that when you leave this world, and we're all transitioning, we're all going to go, I can't tell you when. Some of us may not be here by the end of the week. I don't know. But you have to be ready to transition. And the only way to be ready is to know Jesus as your Savior. Myrna's 57 plus years of being a member at First Baptist Church did not impress God. Maybe the last several when I was here because she had to listen to me all the time. She was, you've suffered enough. Uh, not even those days. No. Those things didn't impress God. Her love for her husband, for her family, for her grandkids, for you, for her Bible. For, no. None of those things impress God. What impresses God is when we humble ourselves and acknowledge our sin and say, Jesus, I need you to be my Savior. That's what impresses God. That's when he says, I will let you into my heart. And when we do that, we mourn Myrna's loss today, and there is loss. There's no doubt about it. That relationship that you had with her is very different today than it was a week ago or two weeks ago. But it can be, it can be there again. Because of what Myrna believed, she's with Jesus right now. And if you believe, you can one day be with Jesus as well. And guess what? Myrna will be there and you'll be there with her. But if you don't believe that, you won't be there. And I'm certain that Myrna wants to see you again. I'm certain that Myrna wants you to know her Savior, Jesus Christ. And I'm certain that Myrna wants you to think, wow, is that why Myrna did those things? Not perfect. Why did she have those Bible studies? Why did she come to church? Because she loved her Lord. She wanted to learn and grow. She didn't live life perfectly. None of us did. And she lived her life with her Savior. And that's all she needed. We're going to sing a song here to close. A song that uh, you've heard many times. I'm confident of that. Amazing Grace. John Newton wrote the song Amazing Grace. And near the end of his life, he said, my memory, John Newton said this, the author of Amazing Grace, he said, my memory is almost gone. And I don't know how true that was, but he, was, he knew he was failing. He said, my memory is nearly gone. I'm sorry, there's the quote. But I remember two things. I am a great sinner. He remembered. If you know anything about John Newton's life, he was a great sinner. But he also remembered, he said this, that Christ is a great Savior. And he's a greater Savior than we are sinning. So Martin's going to come, Martin, come and lead us in that song, Amazing Grace. Think about that. We have, a, we have great sin, we have a greater Savior. <coughs>
little head start on this. But it will not matter in the scope of eternity. Because when we've been there 10,000 years, it's like we just began. Eternity is a long time. Well, what we're going to do is uh, from here, we're going to go to the Old Law Cemetery. If you can come and join us there, you're more than welcome to, to do so. And we'll just proceed here in a moment to the cemetery. From the cemetery, you are invited, if, if you can, to the Arterburn Youth Cabin. If you don't know where that is, ask somebody around you. They'll probably know where that is, or ask me, or somebody in the family. So we're going to go from the cemetery to a meal at the Arterburn Youth Cabin. Okay? And you're invited to come as well there. So let's pray together. Father, we thank you this morning for the gift of salvation that you make available to each and every one of us. And we thank you, Lord, for the confidence that we have to know that when we leave this earth, if we have trusted in Jesus Christ for our salvation, we will be with you like Merlin is with you right now. And Father, we, just, we thank you for that overwhelming message of hope that you give us. And we are so thankful for it. So thankful. Father, I pray that you will give us strength and comfort and peace, especially to these family members and these friends who have lost someone very special to them. And I pray, Father, that each of us here today would also be able to trust, to believe, to have faith in who you are and in this plan that you have for us. And we pray these things in Jesus' name.